Hey everyone, welcome back to this episode of The Vlogsmith. It's kind of like a mini episode uh, where I will be ta uh, tackling challenging shit. Hey everyone, and welcome to this mini edition of The Vlogsmith. Today I'm going to be tackling how to plan ahead on working on a D20. This is a 20 sided dice that I want to make out of a steel sphere. Now this is actually a cast iron sphere that you can buy at, uh, at Industrial Metal Supply or other metal suppliers uh, near you. They just happen to be near my area. And I'm pretty sure you can buy this online from IMS. So anyway, um, today I'm not going to be going to the forge. Actually I'm going to go ahead and head to the uh, drawing table. Alright. Now ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and begin and explain what an icosahedron is. An icosahedron is a 20-sided polygon as opposed to a dodecahedron which has only 12. Now the, the do in dodeca means 2 and the deca means 10 and a lot of people think that it is a multiplier to get 20 and that is incorrect. It's actually just 2 plus 10. Now folks, an icosahedron is a polygon with 20 equal triangular faces, 30 edges, and 12 vertices. Okay, so how am I going to go about doing this? A hammer, a flat, flattening hammer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my piece with my tongs as such obviously I'm exaggerating here's my piece I'm gonna use a flatter now a flatter is a, a large face hammer that you go ahead and strike on this point right there to get the desired effect from that face. All that force downward will go ahead and flatten that area out from both sides possibly. Okay, so for this I will probably need a secondary hand to work on it. Well, now, now you say, well, how am I going to go ahead and time all of these faces perfectly? That is the real issue. I think the, the best way to go around doing this is marking off the vertices, which there are 12 of. And that is the points where the angles intersect. So not to bore you guys with the details, I already did my math prior to this. And I found out that my side, that one of my links on, on my side, for a sphere that is roughly an inch 560, which is a little bit over an inch and a half, is around 850 thousandths. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is mark a point on the sphere. Well, how am I going to mark the point, you ask? I'm going to go ahead and use this. This is a automatic center punch. Now, the advantage of having this versus, let's say, having the hammer and a punch is that you don't have to figure out a way to hold your piece in order for you to punch it. The spring inside acts as a very good potential energy drive. for good measure and you can see right there that it made a mark. Now that I know that my lines are 850 long I'm gonna go ahead and set this at 850 thousandths. And I'm going to scribe a circle. And I realize I'm using my expensive calipers here but it's all for the show right? Okay, 
now that I have a point of origin, I'm going to arbitrarily choose a point on here and make another mark. Two for good measure. Still set at 850 thousandths. And I'm going to scribe an intersecting line. right there. Twice for good measure. Can we continue on? Okay, and as you can see here, I've got the five points originating from the very center. Which mimics that. In fact, the herpes virus has an icosahedral shell. Make you think next time you go ahead and roll a d20, huh? go grab a marker, okay, I'm just connecting the dots here, well, I uh, do believe we are done.